Thank you and good afternoon all. Well, it is for me in the UK and wherever you are. Um, I just want to run through, uh, I've spent 50 minutes with you today going through some of the approvals that are available to you in Flow and how you can use those to automate your approval processes. Uh, so first of all, once we get back into this, the natural world, we can make sure that we will all try and get to the, the Collab Conference in uh, Nevada. Uh, that would be great next year. And also, um, thank you to all of our sponsors. Um, these guys really help us out to put on this show and all the work that they've done. And also thank you to all the, all the organisers. They've done a lot of work and effort to get to this point. And there's a raffle. So if you want to win an Oculus Quest, please fill out the uh, raffle uh, quiz and uh, submit your answers. And also donate if you can donate to so help with the um, COVID efforts in, in various ways. So who am I? Um, I'm Carl Cookson. I'm uh, a manager for Avenard in the UK. Um, Avenard are a global systems integrator. We are enjoying our 20th year. Um, originally started by Accenture and Microsoft uh, to provide uh, consultancy and insight and innovation across the Microsoft platform. We have been awarded the, uh, the Microsoft Partner of the Year 14 times and as well as holding 19 gold partner competencies. We deliver projects across the Microsoft stack, whether that's rolling out 1.2 million users of Teams to the NHS users recently, or helping with the ventilator project in the UK with um, HoloLens Learning, as well as supply chain management using Dynamics ERP. I have worked for Avenar for a couple of years now, um, and on numerous projects, mainly in the enterprise space, and I've been brought up on CRM before uh, moving into the Microsoft stack five years ago. Um, this slide, they've asked you to put your favorite achievement and what you want to do, et cetera, on. So my favorite achievement was to get the MB600 quite recently um, after taking it in the beta. Um, and I'm passionate about learning and love um, tinkering with uh, software. I'm a developer at heart. You can follow me there at link365 on Twitter and link365.blog um, if you want to see any of this information. Just an agenda for today. Um, first of all, we're going to look into approvals quite quickly and uh, just why we've got approvals in our business. Then we're going to go through the three approval types. Firstly, send email with options, simple out the box approvals and custom approvals using adaptive cards in Teams and hopefully we'll have time for some questions at the end. So everyone's got approvals, whether it's a sales process to approve an opportunity or a lead or, or a um, price point, um, a discount level through to HR approvals of holiday requests, SLA agreements need to be approved. Those documents all need to be validated. And in this modern age, it's really core to your business to make sure that these processes is, are agile enough and efficient enough to not slow those processes down. Most effective organisations have got these processes defined and have multiple layers to them, and that's why we need a tool to allow us to um, deploy these approvals in their very numerous states um, to make sure that we've got the um, correct levels and the responsiveness of these approvals. And in past times, these approvals were custom. So we had to create custom logic, we had to create custom validation, etc. And um, timers and all, the, all those sort of things to try and get these approvals up and running in, whether it's a Dynamics 365 environment or a SharePoint or a bespoke app. But with the advent of Power Automate and the flow approvals, this is all part of your subscription now. So we have anything, you've got an E1 upwards, you would have a flow um, approvals uh, license and be able to use it. And these are multi-level approvals like I will show you that you be able to fit most situations. In fact, I have come across a situation where they can't be used appropriately. So the first one is send with options, and this is the simplest one. This is not officially in approval from uh, in the Microsoft Flow approvals uh, setting. It's 
but it gives you a few benefits that the others don't have. And the main one being is that you can send this out to um, external users. This approval doesn't have to be associated with your tenant, your um, environment at all. Um, we don't need a license and it will work on, it, it is just a button on an email and I'll show you that in a letter a bit later. And it's great for when you need a external party to approve um, whatever you're sending them or to validate their email address. My scenario that I've worked through recently is um, for my child's diving club, my, my youngest son um, platform dives, so he jumps off uh, 10 meter boards and does things into the water. Um, and I've been volunteered to do the chair, the chair of that charity last year, and, and I enjoy that role as well. But as part of um, allowing the, the children to um, be looked after and support them as they're moving through their journey, we obviously need to collect a load of information about them with regards to their uh, medical information. And it's got to be secure. And before I joined, that, that was all done on paper. So what I did was bring all that data into, into SharePoint, but also to do that approval, I used the, the send with options to allow the parent to acknowledge that they've, uh, they've agreed to the terms and conditions, they've agreed that the data is correct, and, and most importantly, prove that the email address we have for them is correct. Um, so this is just simply to show you, and I'll, I'm now going to jump into a demo of, of how we can do this within um, Flow. I'm just going to swap to my correct tenant. That's my dev, and then we're going to just go and create um, a new um, instant flow. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm using, I'll just, just get it generated. The reason why I'm using an, an instant flow, because I can trigger it manually and it's just a cheat for demoing. Um, if I delete this and um, show you um, what other connectors you've got available, you have got um, a vast amount of connectors from um, Common Data Service, which is the backbone of, of the Dynamics 365 and other applications, um, RSS feeds, Teams, SharePoint, um, OneDrive, um, there's lots of um, premium connectors connecting to other third party products. Um, and basically any of those um, connectors allows you to take a trigger from, from that uh, uh, service. So we would be able to say, if a record was created, go and do a thing. If a record um, reaches a certain state, go and do an approval. So in the opportunity world, if, if the record has been um, sent and um, requested for approval, we could then trigger this flow. And we always do that if a SharePoint file gets updated, if a SharePoint list gets an item on it, we can do that sort of thing. Um, so it's really a it's a um, basis to trigger from anything. But let's just go back to that uh, flow um, trigger flow button and what I'm going to do now is just to connect to my common data service and go and get a record and just need to go and get the record ID uh, so I'm going to get a record and I'm going to choose an environment and I'm going to look at the contact entity And the identifier is one I did earlier, so I'm just going to cheat. Uh, forgive me for that. Um, and all I'm going to do now is send out this approval. So um, uh, what I'm going to use is the Outlook connector. And I'm going to use the send an email with options. So the email address that I want to send it to is that email off the contact. And I, I'm going to um, put a subject in. And then I'm going to change the options. So here we have red, green and blue. And that's it. 
So I do a save and do a test, I'll perform the trigger action, and we test. This is asking me permissions to approve the, the permissions that I've already got, make sure I'm using the right connector. So um, just continue on that and then run the flow. So hopefully I'll get some green ticks. Yes, I do. So here the, the trigger has happened. I've got the record and we're waiting for the response to this send email with options. And hopefully if I see my uh, uh, email in here. This is the one that I've just made. So uh, I've just received this um, and I've got now three buttons available to you. So the email that I sent it to was fine. I can write some more text in there to to allow them to agree to, to, to some terms, but importantly I can react. So if I hit blue, then I get the response blue has been successfully registered. And we're all green. Um, and in the output from this that you can see that the selected option and it was blue. So the, the premise of this um, is effectively what would you do after that? And what would you do after that? Once you've got that response, it, you would up, go and update a record or you would go and update a SharePoint list or a SharePoint file or any other connector that you've got available. So let's just go and do that as well. Um, update a record and we're going to just update the uh, contact that we've already got. And uh, use the same uh, ID. Um, and then we're going to put the last name in. So let's put in the last name in with the response that we got back. Uh, save. And test again. And I'm just going to go to my environment and bring up my contact record. While I'm waiting for that, excuse me. Where's my uh, Email has come through. There it is again. I'm going to choose green this time. So if I go to contacts um, and just search for Carl, um, it's probably not my contact. Do the same on that search. Uh, you can see that my uh, Gmail account has been changed to Carl Green. Simple, straightforward, um, and effective. Um, just one more thing I wanted to, sh to, to go through. There's a few options in this. Um, the, the body of the email, you know, you can do a bit more formatting um, and you can add attachments, you can change the importance, but you're still limited to um, having the, the, the top and bottom header and footer uh, that are Flow um, Power Automate branded. Um, and um, the other thing that you need to be worrying about is that if you don't get a response, this flow would would sit there for the the maximum run time of a flow, which is is 28 days. Um, so it would still be sitting there waiting for a response. And to prevent that, because a lot of the time your business needs a quick, a lot quicker response than that, and also. You, don't, you want to cater for the where people don't know what they're doing or, or can't interact with you. Um, you need to be able to tell someone to do something manually about that. Um, so what you do with that is you put in a parallel branch. And what this, this means is that in the scenarios, we're still going to do that send email with options and update the record, um, but we're going to have a delay here. And if we have a delay, and add a uh, seven days to represent a week, give them a week to, to complete the task. Um, we can then quite easily use another connector to um, send an email. Oh, wrong one. Uh, 
send an email. Send an email um, to our administrator, or whoever, whoever you need it to make sure that you're doing with a no response and the body. And that you can then put some custom logic in here. Um, so if we put uh, full name, respond. Um, and the other things that you need to make sure that is that um, whichever branch gets to run, you need to stop the other branch. So you don't want the emails being sent about no response if the response is there. So what you need to do at this point is um, put a termination event in uh, action in and make sure it's positive so we don't get um, error messages and um, we can then do the same on this side as well. So if they do respond, we don't send it within the seven days. We don't send out the email to say um, what's what's happening with it. So we can then save that and run it through again just to to to, to show you what it looks like within the uh, development environment. And this this parallel architecture um, is a godsend for a lot of your approvals. There's going to be times where um, you want to escalate, for, for instance, where you've not had a response from um, a manager in time. You want to escalate that to his manager or, or maybe um, reintroduce the approval again um, so that it's a reminder. So in this scenario, we're waiting for both. Um, we're waiting for me to reply and we're waiting for the delay. Um, if I go over to my uh, Gmail account and find it, there it is. You can see that reply is there and uh, we can run through that and then you should see that it, it has run successfully, but this delay is never going to happen because this flow is now being terminated. So that's send with options. That's um, the easiest of the, of the three. Um, as I say, it's an external access you can do uh, without a license. So let's move on to the more complex ones now. Um, it's just a backup of the this information. So this is this is the where we um, show you that for the, the the charity, the club I'm running, we're actually taking a submission of, of a Microsoft form, getting the response details, creating the SharePoint um, data and sending this email with options to get their approval. Um, and if we do get an approval, we go and update that medical to confirm that has been done. And, it, and this is the delay that I was talking about in, the, in a similar vein. So out of the box approvals is next and they give you a lot more flexibility. Um, the, the, the main thing being that the, they allow for a single or group approval and what I mean by that is that you can send an approval to many people and either allow one person to, to whoever reacts first to take that approval or wait for everyone to approve it um, or wait for everyone's input. Um, that's not possible in the in the um, send via email. All that is doing is waiting for the first person to approve it. And um, the send by email doesn't have any idea about um, the number of people that are reacted. You just get the first condition that comes through. And also you've got um, not only is it supported with an Outlook and, and all the, the common applications, you can still um, and you've got a flow application that, that people can see it and the flow and the approvals are logged and there um, people can see who approved it and when and what the comments were, which I'll go straight through as well. Um, but the, the big caveat on all of this is that any user you send an approval to needs to be within your tenant, normally via the, the fact that he's part of your organisation 
um, but also she could also be a guest user. So you could bring them in as a guest and send them an approval. And that might work for if you're collaborating on a deal or a series of, of customers, you may want to bring one of, the, one of their sales team into, or your partner's sales team into your organization. Um, and, that, and that's the biggest concern. And, and it's with, with Microsoft, um, I've, I've got this as an outstanding. Whether they will ever resolve it, I don't know. Um, so let's go back into demo mode again, and then we'll just run through how we're going to do this approval. Um, so let's go and create a new flow uh, and do the same steps. Um, and I'm going to do the same common data service, get a record as well. Um, And um, we need that identifier again. Um, to get that record. And so the next is, is an actual approval. So if you go to the approvals connector, you'll see that there's three um, actions available to you. Um, the first one and the last one are a pair that go together. Um, you can for the, the final part of this process, you can create an approval and wait for it separately and that there is a few um, scenarios that where that where that can be useful and uh, particularly if you want to send your own action card but the one that we're going to use is just going to be this the standard state start and wait for the approval um like i was saying you've now got um different options about how who can respond and how many people need to respond um and custom responses so the approve and reject and everyone must approve it, it will sit there for uh, whoever you send this approval to, it will wait until all of them are approved or it will time out. Um, if, um, if someone rejects it, the whole thing will be rejected. There's no two ways about it. Some You can't get a, a approval or not. One person rejecting will, will, will stop. Um, the simplest there is the first to respond, um, which is similar to the, 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 out, the Outlook version. Um, whoever gets there first, will, it will take their response. And then you've got custom responses. So like we said, red, yellow, uh, red, green and blue within the Outlook version. We've all got, so got the similar and the, the capabilities of doing that within um, approvals. Let's just do a first to respond quickly. And give it a title. And let's try and use that contact record and that's all I need. So um, let's test that. Again, it's asking me for permission. Um, it's asking me for approvals permission this time as well. And we'll run the flow. And straight away we've got a failure. The reason being. Um, this guy. My Gmail account is not in the environment, so you can see straight away that we, we are limited to who we can send these approvals to. So let's fix that and go back to um, sending it to my Stooge um, salesperson. Um, and um, here we're limited to the market now and we can use as well. And it's not normal um, HTML, it's um, it's um, a markup and markdown language that is documented, but is, is more limited than HTML in what you can do. Um, let's save that. And give that a test. Um, run the flow. And. Wait for it to succeed. Hopefully. Hey, Carl. Uh, sorry for interrupting this for a sec. Can you just zoom in a little bit your browser? I think uh, yeah. attendees are seeing maybe a little bit small. Awesome. All right. That's Thank a, you. That looks Thank perfect. you. Let me know. Thank you. The old developer in me that has to have everything small and tiny. Um, I, right, so, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if I go and get, have a look at um, Veronica's. Uh, this is Veronica. Yeah. This is Veronica and we have now had an email. Um, so 
here's the email from um, myself to Veronica. We're asking for approval. Um, we've got some branding um, and we've got some details that have been um, um, tailored um, and we've got approve and reject buttons and also we've got a reason. So this is obviously optional and it's a step up from what we had previously and um, we can put in a, a message which will then go and get um, be sent to the um, back to the to the flow and wait for that to trigger there you go so in this um, response we can see who approved it and the reason is is the response summary but down in the uh, the um, JSON object that did I really say that? I must be uh, getting confused about what I'm saying. It's a lump in a long day because I was up quite early doing some producing for this event. Um, so you can see that, that you've got a JSON object that you can do things with, um, but overall you've got this approval. So let's just change that um, to um, everyone must approve and add in. We need to put the title back because it's I don't understand why it doesn't keep what you had before, but it doesn't. Um, we'll put in a couple of people. Um, to show you what else you can do. Um, and there's also um, a link here, so you could put in a, a record link, which I've made earlier. Um, and which is if anyone's familiar with with uh, D365, this is a link to a contact record. Um, and then we can approve that. And this is this is where, where the scenario where you're approving an opportunity or you're approving. You could link to the file within SharePoint. You can do a lot of things if you can generate that link. Um, and there's obviously a lots of ways you can get to that link for various different aspects. So let's go and have a look at um, this um, again. And just give it a second. Uh, so you'll now see that you had a ding from my account, which is where the, the first approval is. And uh, Veronica's also got an approval. Um, let's just have a look at Veronica. Uh, let me approve this one. Uh, I don't need to put a reason in. So I've approved it. If, let's go and have a look at Veronica and look at in her uh, approvals. So we now got everyone approve this as a an approval. Um, I can look at that and um, add my response. But I've also got available to me a reassign and this is an option that you can make available on um, approvals in general um, or prevent when you set up the approval itself. Um, so I could re reassign, but I don't can't reassign to people that have already uh, done it. Uh, so it won't let me do that. Um, it would have to be a person that hasn't done it before. Um, but I'm not going to resign, reassign it. I'm just going to reject it um, and confirm that. So back in my um, flow, we've run successfully, but we've got um, a shared outcome. Um, so there is an approve and reject, but there is a reject, and therefore you can use that to, to your um, heart's desire to be able to do that to decide what that's going to look like and what you do with that information. Um, so um, and the other part of this is and the final part for this. Um, uh, wait for responses, so let me just render that again um, so we can have our red. Green. And blue as well. Um, and we can assign it to people. Uh, 
Um, I've forgotten. Veronica. Um, and we can do all the other things that we can. We, we, I'll just do all this down. So this is where we can enable or enable it reassignment. Um, so if I set that to no, we don't need to send them an email if we're not, if we're allowing um, notifications through Flow, etc., cetera, um, or emails, it wouldn't send those out. You, they, people would still have to go to the Flow app. And this is obviously uh, designed for when, you, when you're when you doing the notification in another manner. And you can add attachments. So quite a lot of things you can add there. Um, let's save that. And give that a test as well. So this is the email version and I can obviously choose green if I wanted to. Um, but back in my flow, this will never complete. This is going to wait for um, three people to approve it and it will only return when those or time out um, when those three people um, send their um, send their choice in. And this is great for um, getting a, ver a verdict and getting an, an opinion over over things and, and can be used, um, I wouldn't say for voting, but um, I'm sure Mr. Trump would have something to say about how secure it would be, but other things that are reliant on, on an opinion. Um, and then we've got the, the final one, which we've already seen. So custom responses, but only waiting for one response. So whoever chooses their colour first in this scenario would get that value. OK, right, let's just jump back to the presentation. Um, done that bit. Right, so custom adaptive cards. Um, these cards are um, adaptive cards as, as is fairly new. So adaptive cards are a framework with which are platform agnostic. Um, they're used throughout the Microsoft suite um, um, Outlook having its own version because they're slightly different, but Teams um, notifications within Windows 10 um, um, across uh, other areas and I'll show you those later. And external apps, third party apps, virtual bots, app bot, for example, or um, the virtual um, bot that Microsoft gives us all can use these JSON cards to display information. Um, and the idea of having a JSON specific um, data and representation is that you can you're not worried about rendering it. The, the host application has to render it and render it in the appropriate way. Um, and that means you can use these cards throughout your organization, whether you're notifying via Teams or you're putting a, a pop up on a, on a Windows desktop. Um, you've got a lot more flexibility in the design for these cards and you have um, through the, the limited um, standard um, approval mechanism and, and you can then change and alter the branding to suit your company's um, branding um, and it gives you a lot more rich information that could apply to a busy salesperson. Imagine if you you know if you need to be able to see the opportunity and the opportunity lines and the discounts in each line before you need you can approve it uh, you can quickly display that vital information and, and get a yes no on the spot. Previously, you would have to go into the opportunity and, and look at that and things and drive down to the central application. And it also means that your approvers don't need necessarily need that sales license. They could be the senior managers, uh, the people that tend to use Power BI or some other tool rather than the actual nitty gritty of the detail. Again, we can support group approvals. Um, um, but you must. Uh, anyone that can see this card must be able to approve it. If I'm publishing this to a team that has five people in it um, only, and only four people within that team can actually approve it, then that's obviously going to be a negative user experience. So you need to keep these things in sync. And I'll, and I'll we'll, we'll run through this just now and show you what's happening with these things. Uh, so again, let's start with a new flow. Oh, missed. And this time I'm going to go and get an opportunity because that will serve us um, well for later on. So I'm going to get a record and select the current environment. Um, uh, 
by my notes. Um, and that's the opportunity ID. And then we're going to um, do what I showed you earlier, um, which was um, approvals and create an approval. And again, we've got the, the, the same conditions. Um, so let's just keep it as a simple one for now. And we're going to create a title and assign it to several people. Um, and that's that will do. Uh, we can still apply the same logic we've already seen, we reassignment, etc. But that will do. Let 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 us see what that gives us. So we're just creating approval. We've not. We're basically saying, go on. There is an approval for you to do, um, but we're not telling anyone about it. Um, if we take off the no. So save and test. Permissions again. Continue. Run. And um, done. Oh, what happened there? Did I get that wrong? Yes, I did. Copy and paste skills are not good today. Let's just change the ID. The, the smart eyed of you would have noticed that was the um, contact ID rather than the opportunity. So we'll run that again. And we've created an approval and we're finally finished. So within this approval, the bit that we are concerned with and I wanted to show you was this adaptive card. This is the bit that um, is the default adaptive card that gets sent out. So if I go and show that you in uh, in friendly Visual Studio code and just do some formatting. You can see that um, it is just a JSON object. Um, there is uh, the, the, the information that has been passed in, um, but these are the important bits. So there's two actions, a submit and a uh, two submit actions, a reject and an approve. Um, and these are the key bits that we need to make sure that we've got. Uh, the first being the link, the second be the ID of the approval or the approval name for some unknown reason. And then this is the creation time. So this is also important as well. Um, so what we need to do now is to design this. And what Microsoft has also given us availability to uh, show is the fact that we've got this adaptivecars.io and they've given us a designer. Um, so if I paste my code into here, and we can format in here as well. You can see that we have got the generic uh, display of the of the, the card within um, the, the bot framework web chat, and you can also choose something else. And these are the, the ones that Microsoft are uh, supporting. So these are the ones that you can do within Microsoft. Uh, Timeline, Cortana, um, let's keep to um, Teams um, and let's just tweak a few bits. So on this right hand side, you can see a card structure. And as I go through, we've got images that are available and um, um, text blocks. You can add your own. You can you can summarize and, and, and uh, embellish on this. You can change the formatting quite easily um, because you've now got a bit more um, control over it. Um, you can change the color. Um, and that sort of thing. And you can be quite um, descriptive about what's, what's going on in here. Um, uh, make sure that we've got an extra large title. Um, let's just change that uh, logo just so that we can prove that we're being less corporate. Um, and the image uh, is the virtual one. Um, you know, and we can also be uh, on these on buttons, we can change the, the wording. Um, we can do whatever we want here. Um, and once we're done, once we're happy, we, you know, and we maybe tested it in light teams or it's a bit bland, but anyway, everyone is in the dark mode, aren't they? Um, and we can copy this JSON 
back into uh, the flow. And what I'm going to do is create um, using the uh, adaptive cards under Teams. Here you can see that you've got um, two options basically. You can either post your own and uh, to a user or a channel, or you can post an adaptive card to a team and wait for a response. And the difference, and I'll show you, the, I'll quickly show you the other one later. Um, it one uses that designer, but the other one allows you to to post paste in the information um, and it also waits. You can do the wait, which I'll show you now. So let's just post to a user. Um, and I'll post it to myself. Um, and the message is that JSON object. So as you can see here, um, it's expecting an adaptive card functionality. And we need to do some tweaks to this to allow it to work for our environment because these are generated on the fly. Um, the first one being this link here. We'd go and find this. Um, and we need to put in the response link. Let's just check that that's worked. The approval ID. Uh, approval ID and the uh, create time. And be careful here, this um, creation time um, needs the extra um, slash and quotes to make sure there is quotes around it. Um, so that should be enough. That should be good enough. And you can obviously repeat that for the, the, sub, the reject action. So let's just save that. Um, and so these, this approval ID, the request and the response are coming from this generated approval that we've just done. So we can test that now, perform the action. We've asked, asked for approvals and teams this time. So we need to approve that and we're done. And I've got, Flo has just sent me a card. Um, that's not come through for some reason. Um, I don't know why, um, but you can see this is the card that we've just created within that tool set. This is um, still allows us to do the comments um, and we can submit. Um, what I didn't do in that history was actually wait for the response. So we just need to um, add in a wait condition, which is a waiting for that approval. Uh, to make sure that we're waiting for a response. And that would obviously be if we're doing multiple people, then it would wait for all of them to approve. And then you can go on and do whatever you need to do. Um, so let's just change that. Let's just copy that because it will work. Um, let's just remove that. And the reasons why we do this is that we um, can send to a team. Um, to a channel within a team. So um, I'm looking up for my out of the box team and a general channel, and then we're going to post that. Um, we still got our links, which is good, and save it. Um, and if we run that through, Once it's done its thing. In the Teams general channel, we should have that same approval just being sent now. So that's it basically. The, the other thing I wanted to show you um, was um, quickly that um, the way it works, you can get out a, a, a better approval um, editor this, that we've just seen, but within flow. Um, but um, this, uh, oh, where'd it go? There it is. Um, um, Oh, I, I excuse me. I need to switch over to the new interface. If you were in the, if you'd gone to um, 
uh, power automate settings and put experimental features on and reloaded. I'll just show you quickly, sorry. Um, this, oh, I've lost it. Let's just add an approval. I didn't save it. I thought I'd saved it. Um, you get um, this create adaptive card, which is the same schema, same, um, but it's tailored to teams um, and allows you to be a more, bit more creative and within the teams environment. So you don't have to do that copy and paste. Um, and you can pass parameters in, but you're very much limited to um, single parameters. Um, what I wanted to show you to finish off really was was the custom action card that, that represents that opportunity that we were talking about earlier, where you've got more opportunity lines. Uh, come on. No. So if I run this one through, you can see that I'm getting the opportunity. I'm also getting the opportunity lines um, for that opportunity um, with a filter of query and building up um, using apply to each that approval. And then we're going to post an adaptive card to the user. So what this looks like um, when we get that through, and I probably get it because I've done it in a several bits is um, is a, a quick and easy, more selective, um, a more visible um, opportunity approval. So there we've got the whole of the, the discounts that are applied, the totals that are available, the quantities, and, and this is probably going to be enough for a senior manager to go, yeah, I know it's Maggie's, Margie's travel. I know this Veronica's probably done a due diligence and the op values within range. Yeah, I'm quite happy for this to go through and approve and reject it there and then without bothering for um, discussion. Um, and that's in a team's environment where you get that flexibility in design. And that's me. Um, two minutes early. Um, so hopefully you've seen the three types of approvals that are available to you and giving you some ideas about how we can approach these things and how you can be flexible in your approval processes. Um, and I'll leave the, the, the charity slide up and see if there's any questions. Uh, and have a look at the so, so there is a, an Adobe Adobe Sign Connector um, available. Um, is there a way to see who hasn't approved and rejected yet? Um, yes, I think there is within the approvals um, configuration. Uh, if I go to my approvals that have been sent, who am I logged in as? Veronica, that's no use. Approvals that have been sent. Um, you can see that um, down this right hand side you get the uh, history, um, but I don't think you might be right that I don't think that's available. Just telling me pending. So, no, I might have to take that one back. Sorry. Um, any more? I haven't got time really. I think we're going to get kicked out any second. Um, there isn't any delegation per se, um, as in uh, always send my approvals elsewhere. Um, you'd, you'd have to bring in that logic to allow that um, with, and store that data, um, who your delegate is. Um, in something um, you could have a team against an opportunity to have the approvers against, for example, or against an organization. Um, uh, should we ever interact with an approvals power app screen? I'm not sure about that one. I might have to take that one offline. Um, 
if I and only if Veronica approves that it's sent to Cooks. Yeah, yeah. So the tiering of approvals is there. So you could have Veronica approve first and then send to her manager if she send a second approval to her manager if it meets some condition. Uh, that's quite an easy thing to do. Um, it, you just have to build up that flow and you know it's the flexibility of, of Power Automate or Flow to allow those interactions and, and those loops. Um, you could um, do quite a few different bits of the approvals in that scenario. Um, there is uh, there isn't a loop. You can build your own loops within you can call other flows, flows called in flows to create that looping process if you needed that. Um, but there isn't any looping within Power Automate per se. Uh, there will be a video um, available. Um, they're all going to be really available on YouTube, I believe, and, and that will be um, at the end once that is there. Um, information that is added from external website, Alexis. It depends on what you're what you're doing. So, not the connectors are available for SharePoint. They're there for the common data service. They're there for uh, forms. So you, you could put a form, very simply, a form on your on your website, um, external to uh, your environment, and post it in that way. There is um, obviously if you've got a um, a WordPress site, there is connectors to to SharePoint or to to generate that data. So and and then the trigger would be the creation of that data rather than the actual website itself. And I think that's me done though. So thank you for your time today. Thank you for attending. I hope you get um, some insight out of that. Please contact me. Um, on LinkedIn or Twitter um, if you've got any questions and, and you want to have a chat. But thank you again for your time.